All right, let's get started. So, um, this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, sorry, you you might think to yourself, you know, they had a recent controversy, right? Where they said that they were going to restrict the distribution of their source code to only paying customers. Now, this is kind of a red herring, right? Because a lot of people would say, oh, well, that makes it closed source because the dis uh, source code isn't distributed publicly anymore. That isn't really the point, however. Uh, Red Hat, for the longest time, I would not consider a open source distribution, whereas I would consider something like Rocky or Alma or CentOS to be fully open source. Now, I can't actually tell you the exact specifics uh, if they run completely 100% open source software on these distributions, but I do know that Red Hat doesn't. And the reason why I know Red Hat doesn't is because they have an activation service and because of the way that they license and because of the backend that they run where your computer is connecting to a non-open source backend, that makes your, your operating system closed source. Whereas if you were to strip all of that out, then it would be an open source operating system. So when you buy Red Hat, you know, they have a way for you to register and license it for your specific computer and it'll run an activation service that will uh, give you access to their enterprise tier like level support. And this is something that Rocky and Alma and CentOS do not have, even though the operating system itself is bug for bug compatible with Red Hat Enterprise. So, uh, although now CentOS is kind of upstream, but not quite as upstream as Fedora, it's really confusing on how they work now. But um, when you're running Red Hat, though, you have to remember that your computer is not the only system being run. You are connecting to proprietary services. And when you do this, you are running closed source software on your computer, basically. So, like, that really... So that really makes it different from, and this is why people will say, uh, if you just throw out, you know, a meme saying that Red Hat's closed source, they'll think that you mean that because of the distribution that it's closed source, but this isn't the case. Rocky and Alma would be open source because they don't have proprietary services running on your, on your computer, especially online services. And people start to get confused about that. Like if you were to run a uh, Vencord on Discord, you know, like a open source moddable client, Discord itself is um, is not a open source piece uh, service, you know, so you are running closed source software through an open source client. Same thing with Telegram. You are running an open source Necogram client, but the service you're connecting to is proprietary. So, and this is why people have an issue with snaps is because the snaps itself are open source but the backend is not, and Red Hat's backend, as far as I know, is not open source. I obviously don't have access to their source code at all, so I can't tell you what their backend is running or how open source that is, you know? But I'm going to make an assumption and say that their activation service that they're licensing is not open source software, because otherwise it could just be cracked, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you could just run cracked enterprise, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux all you want. Although you probably could make it open source if you wanted to and just have it, you know, but the servers that they're running their databases and all this are not, it's not open source, you know, I can't go buy a, buy one of their data centers. I mean, obviously not, but you know, I can't, I can't see what software they're running on their servers that my computer is connecting to. So that is why Red Hat is not open source, but Rocky Alma and CentOS are, as far as I know. That's about it. Thanks.